to the latest episode of the Dermalux Academy. Uh, and today's episode is to celebrate our 10 year anniversary um, with 10 of the most asked Dermalux questions. Um, and the questions, well, throughout the questions, we'll discover more about the protocols, um, about our devices. There will be um, questions about how to integrate LED successfully in the business. And also, what does the future hold for LED treatments? Uh, so, my name is Melissa Williams and I'm the Head of Education here at Dermalux LED and joining me is the exceptional Dr. Abs, who I'm sure you will have met in previous episodes um, on our YouTube channel. I'll pass you over to Dr. Abs shortly, but there may be time in today's session um, for you to be able to ask some questions and we should be able to answer them as well. So please do fire any questions over in the chat box or there is a question and um, answer section at the bottom as well. Um, so please, Dr. Abs, do introduce yourself to those that may not be familiar with, with your work at the moment. Um, so I am Dr. Abs, as Melissa said, thank you very much. Um, I've used LED for... Uh, quite a few years now. Um, I'm both a cosmetic dentist and cosmetic um, doctor as well. And LED in, is something which I probably couldn't really imagine um, my clinical practice without now having used it. Um, and it's something which I would implore everyone to look at because the way it works is, is very, very unique in terms of, of, of what it does to your, to your cells. And the way you can control those cells means that there's really nothing in the world that it, that it can't complement or help treat in some way. Right, brilliant. So yeah, I think you're the perfect person to um, answer these questions. So what I'll do is I'll get stuck in with our first question. Um, uh, and I mean, you've been a supporter of Dermalux for a while now, but you, I also love how you openly say that it's nothing to do with the brand or the, you know, yeah. of what device you're choosing. It's actually to do with science and, and the facts. And so what is it about Dermalux that meets your needs in that way and why you've offered the Triwave MD or the Flex MD to your clients? Yeah, it's, um, it, it's simply a question of fundamentally understanding what causes a change in you. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll go to something else and, and then come back. So it's, it's a bit of an analogy. So if you were looking at, let's say, for instance, um, you, you were a Formula One team, you want to make the car quicker. There's, there's fundamentally things which are responsible for the speed of the car, such as you know, the tires, the engine, uh, the weight, et cetera. These are the things that matter. You don't think about your car, you think about individual parts of it. When you're thinking about LED, you're not thinking about necessarily what machine do I get? You're thinking about the individual particle or wave of radiation interacting with an individual part of your cell. Whatever happens there is what determines whether you, you get a good before and after picture to advertise with, whether your, your patient loves you because you cleared their acne, um, whether their redness has calmed down, whether they heal from an accident they had quicker or not. So it's, it's literally a subatomic, subcellular scale where everything is happening, an individual wave and an individual part of you and an, an inside a cell. So when you have that perspective, you have to um, expand on that and, and say, okay, well, what creates the correct version of this and what creates the best effect in here? And when you scale that up by working backwards from there, you realize things like, well, if you want to make the, the correct type of radiation and, and the correct wavelength and all this kind of stuff, then it stands to reason the wavelength matters. Is the, is the machine producing the right wavelength. And then if you have more of these waves coming in and hitting more of these cells, you're producing more change. Well, then you work backwards and you realize, okay, well, the number of waves being created translates to the amount of power of the machine or how much energy is being transferred. So then you know, factually speaking, um, the power of the device is crucial. Low power means very few waves or particles are hitting very few targets in the skin which means very few things are happening. Yeah. And so power, wavelength, th these parameters that are sort of parameters which determine success or not, regardless of what company you come from, what device you prefer, how much you paid, um, these are just facts. You know, As an example, different companies can say they produce a faster tire for your car. But when you actually test it, you can see which one will get you to the finish line quicker. And, and that's just a fact. 
And when you test different LED devices and you see different power levels, that's a fact. There's, there's no opinion required. And so that's why I started using the Dermalux initially. Um, I'm not saying I think it's great because I'm, I'm doing things with Dermalux now. I was saying it's great even before that even started. Um, and and that's, that's a very, very genuine opinion that I think it's great. But even then, regard, disregard that. Look at the facts. Look, look at the, the physical parameters that determine radiation production. And they alone will show you what to look for. And once you understand that, you don't have to look at any marketing. You, it's obvious which, which machine was, you know, is, is the best one to get. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, and I know you've always said that it's nothing to do with a brand, even yeah. you know, down to skincare and things like that. It's all about the, you know, what are the facts, what's actually happening with the right yeah. devices or the right products or the right ingredients. And that is what you're guided by, which is so important, I think. I think that that's the perspective I generally tell people, actually, in general, not, not just with LED, and it's yeah. perspective that I have in general as well. So if I'm looking at, I won't mention any other brands, but if let's say I'm looking at a laser, I'll apply the same principles when deciding which laser to buy. Yeah. So I'll look at, okay, you know, what is a laser doing? Well, it, it's, again, it's just radiation hitting a target. Well, then it means we have to look at radiation parameters and, and the target parameters. And then I can just work out which devices parameters are optimal for causing the changes that I want in the patient's skin. So even when you buy a laser, for instance, um, or a fractional RF microneedling, that seems to be quite good and big at the minute, you apply the same perspective and you can ignore marketing all the time because the physics and the biology will tell you which is the best. So we'd all come to you then when we want other devices. <laughs> in our Come on, right. Some of them will hate me. <laughs> <laughs> um, brilliant. Okay, so moving on to question number two. What would you say to anybody in the industry that thinks LED is just an add-on treatment? Um, it is. It is an add-on treatment because it can make any treatment better. Um, but if, if people were to palm it off and, and say that in a sort of derogatory sense, then it's, it's not that LED is, is not worth looking at. It's that you probably don't know what LED is capable of. Yeah. Um, the same thing happened, if we stick with the car analogy for a second, if we look at, let's say, the, the late 19th century when cars were first invented, people probably thought, oh, it's just like a, a millionaire's plaything. Look at, look at my horse, it's, it's the best thing ever. But clearly they didn't understand where it was. And now no one thinks that. When LED first came out, people probably thought, yeah, it's, you know, it's a bit of a gimmick, it's a bit of a novelty. It might look good on social media and patients think they're getting something cool. Um, yeah, let's, let's leave them to it. But actually now it's, it's something else entirely and, it, and it's so powerful. Yeah. Uh, if you ignore the fact that even skin cancer has, is something which this has been granted a medical license to treat, then yeah. you, you, know, you haven't really looked at it properly. And let's be honest, cancer is one of the things that's, that's scrutinized most if you're going to give someone a medical license to treat it because you can't give patients false hope in, in such a, a malicious disease. So when LED comes along and ha it has been granted a medical license for it, clearly it's a serious technology capable of serious benefit and serious change. So it's, it's not something to palm off. And if you think that, my, my guess is you, you don't realize what it's capable of. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to palm off, let's say, uh, for instance, um, you know, a, a Ferrari, because you've never heard of it, clearly you, you don't know that it's quite a fast car, right? So and when you look at it, and then you'll change your minds. When you look at LED seriously, you will understand, you know, that the, the Triwave MD is the Ferrari of LED, mm -hmm. pretty much. And, and it, there's, there's not a lot it, it can't help. And there's very few devices in the world that you can say that about. Yeah, exactly. And when you're looking at the medical licenses, like you said, of the treatments uh, and the indications that we can treat or support, it's definitely not just that add-on treatment. It is also yeah. a, a, a treatment that deserves its place on the, on your treatment menu as, you know, acne clinic, you know, pigmentation yeah. clinic, well-being clinic, pain management. All of those things are... Are, are so important and you would be doing yourself a disservice with a professional LED device if you did just have it as an add-on treatment but as yeah. an add-on treatment every single person that walks in should definitely have it. I think when people look at it as an add-on treatment a lot of the time it's because they think it might make the results slightly better or, or a lot better which, which is fine now nah, yeah. I'm fine I'll just stick to this that's not really a clinically relevant perspective to take. Yeah. It's yeah. not about whether you're necessarily improving the treatment or not. It's, it's about that, but it's about something much, much bigger. 
when you look at any particular treatment, you know, the, the biological sequence of events takes place and then you're, you're left with your result or, or no result. Yeah. When you look at that sequence of events in terms of how LED achieves results, i.e. individual interaction with individual cells on a subcellular level, right. there's nothing in the world that can do that. And once you realize that, you realize actually there are results that you will probably achieve in ways which nothing else can achieve. Um, I'm sure a lot of people would agree acne is probably one of the, the most common sort of cosmetic skin concern that, that everyone in the world is, is complaining about. If you just look at that as an example, most acne treatments will revolve around, you know, first line of treatment, depending on where you are, who you are, blah, blah, blah. It might be something like benzoyl peroxide cream or antibiotics or roaccutane or, or skincare and things like that. They all work in particular ways, which are so, you know, 19th century compared to, to LED. So if we break those down, so as an example, you know, benzoyl peroxide, it's the cream that dries you out, essentially. Is it actually getting any nutrients into the skin? Is it changing the way that the cells behave or are able to, to, to work their functions? Not really. Um, if you look at something like roaccutane, yes, it's giving high doses of vitamin A into the skin, which is great, don't get me wrong, and, and it can help the acne. Um, but is it, is it individually controlling the inflammation of the cells to at will turn it down so that you get a long-term effect? Not really. Um, if you look at antibiotics, you know, um, you, you're taking it in a tablet form. Most of it's gone because of the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, it goes into your bloodstream. You have to hope that it goes to your skin and then the skin on your face and then it interacts with the bacteria to kill them. You're just crossing your fingers and hoping it, it does its thing. LED, if you're using blue, there's, there's no hoping because as soon as you put the switch on, the bacteria are dying. If you had a microscope and you could watch the patient's skin, you will see the bacteria dying right in front of you. So there's no side effects from antibiotics. There's no drying out of the skin like benzoyl peroxide. Um, there's no liver function test required if you'd like roaccutane. Um, there's no hoping that it's reducing the inflammation and killing the bacteria and optimizing cell function at the same time. Because as soon as the switch is on, it's happening right in front of you. If you, know, if you were Superman, you could zoom in, you'll see it. That's why it's not an add-on treatment because there's nothing else that can replicate that. Love the way you've answered that. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, okay. Question, yeah. If, is that, or if I just get to that, yeah, someone says um, difference between the power um, of the flex and the MD. That's a, it's a very short answer. So the MD is about 240 joules. Um, that's per square centimeter over 20 minutes. Uh, the flex is 40 joules per square centimeter over 30 minutes. Perfect. Um, I think I, have, I might have a question uh, coming up on that in a second. So um, um, let's move on to question three then, which is a, a, all about pigmentation, which is a commonly asked question. Uh, what are the different types of pigmentation and how do we have, how do we treat these different types from hormonal to, uh, you know, uh, photo damage? What are the different protocols? Um, so the different protocols basically would be the difference between using this set of wavelengths or, or that set of wavelengths. So generally speaking, you know, the, the, the blue is antibacterial. We're not really looking at that for pigmentation like, like we would for acne, as an example, or, or post-treatment infections. So really, it's a case of near infrared and red. So the two combinations are either infrared or near, sorry, near infrared on its own or near infrared and red together. Um, and in terms of the different types of acne that, that there are, it's not, a, it's not always that important in, in terms of LED um, because the, the pigmentation is produced you know, through melanogenesis and we can inhibit that process to an extent regardless of what caused it in the first place. So the way you try and treat the pigmentation is still the same. So the LED is, is one arm of your arsenal and I would also say skincare as well. There's lots of different brands. Whatever your clinic uses, your skincare should go with the LED because even if you get rid of the pigmentation with LED, we all know pigmentation can come back at any time in your life. And even if you don't have any, you can develop it at any time in your life. Mm -hmm. um, so they should always go together. Now, the difficulty with pigmentation, uh, I'm going to get a little bit more advanced now, but, but I guess everyone here is, is, is probably wanting that, is, is knowing whether to use red or not. And some people will say yes, some people will say no you will see cases where you get a great result with infrared or near infrared on its own, and you get a great result with using red as well. And 
and I can I can understand why that looks confusing, but here's the way to understand why some people get a good result with, with one or the other. The melanocytes, which is you know one of the main cells involved in melanogenesis, hence why it's called the melanocyte, is is kind of like a tree with roots that go very very far. Now, if you have a really strong healthy tree, the roots are going to go really really far, and it's really anchored in. It's sturdy. It's going to stand the test of time and the strongest winds, it will stay there. Melanocytes, when they're dendrites, we call them, when they go as far as possible away into the skin, it's not about being sturdy like a tree, um, but it's still a sign of massive health like a tree. And in this case, it translates to the wider they can spread their arms, the wider the area over which they can deposit their pigment, the melanin. If you have a, an amount of melanin in your hand, and you just put it down in one place, you're gonna have a big pigmented circle wherever you've put that down. But imagine you had that melanin in your hand and you just, you tossed it everywhere and, and spread it with, and you went over it with a brush and everything. It'd be spread so thinly, you probably wouldn't notice a change in, in the color of the floor there. And that's what these, these arms are for. And when we age, we, we lose cell function as I'm sure is common knowledge. And that relates to every cell in the body. And when you age, the melanocytes are the same. They're in that same boat. That's why when we're older, it's easier to develop pigmentation. Or one of the reasons, I should say, for being technical, when the melanocyte isn't functioning as well as when it was when we were you know, teenagers or children, as an example, and, and these arms aren't spread out as far because we're old and withered, it's easier to have pigmentation and quicker for pigmentation to come up as well. Whereas when we're young, it's, it's much more difficult. Our skin is much better toned. And when we use red light, this, this is where the difficulty comes in. When we use red light, we are increasing the cell activity for all intents and purposes without being too technical. And when you're increasing the cell activity, in the case of the melanocyte, it's, it's very appropriate to ask the question, does that mean it's increasing the amount of melanin it's producing? Or does it mean it's increasing the metabolism such that the cell is so healthy now that the arms are really growing um, because it because it that's the activity that it wants to do and so the pigmentation it's producing will, will be spread out more evenly there's no right or wrong answer and i don't think we'll be able to tell a hundred percent what the exact answer is probably not for a long time at the very least so when you use red if your pigmentation gets worse maybe it's because it's being it's being produced more the melanin is being produced more but if you have a case where you used red and it got better it might be because the, the arms are spreading that pigment out more evenly. Yeah. You can't necessarily control which way it's going to go. And so that's why it's very difficult. And, and so for pigmentation, you can't go wrong with near infrared. So I'd always start with that at the very least. And then I would slowly try red. If the red increases the pigmentation, just, just stop after one session. Yeah. That's it. Now, I wouldn't judge that immediately after because the heat will probably make the pigmentation stronger temporarily anyway for a couple of hours. Ignore that. It's, it's just heat, wait till say the next day or something like that, and, and then judge it after that. So that's the difficulty. Unfortunately, even, even I don't have a, an exact answer for you in terms of which way it's gonna go, because it's very, very difficult to even work that out scientifically. How would you even design a, a test or an experiment for that? Um, you can't necessarily tell. So start with near infrared and then try red. And based on that, that test, you then know whether to stick with it or to just stick to near infrared. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, okay, question number four. We know that the tri-wave MD is the most powerful system in the world. So how important is this? And what changes, what, what's happening on a cellular level? What, what can we expect to, to see with the power of the tri-wave MD? Um, if you, so, you know, like I said at the start, you, it's, it's producing radiation, but that's, that's a sort of collective term, radiation. If you could see radiation with your eyes on, on an individual level, you would see, let's say, an individual particle or individual wave, whichever way you want to think about it, it's fine. I'm going to use particle just for the purpose of this, this argument here. So you'll see an individual particle traveling through the air, and then it will hit the target in the cell. So when, when that happens, you, you think of it as completing the circuit so the bulb can turn on, right? So you, you, a piece of the circuit is in the air, it's attaching, the circuit's complete, and then the bulb switches on. So it stands to reason with that analogy, the more circuits that are completed, the more bulbs that switch on and, and a brighter yours, let's say room is, is gonna be. 
So the more radiation that interacts with the radiation target, the more change is caused. And, it, and it's a proportional relationship. So the more power your device generates, the more changes you're going to cause in the skin. And this translates clinically in, in the following way. So if you were to treat, let's say, an acne patient with a Dermalux Flex instead of a Dermalux Triwave MD, you're causing less change in the skin each time. And that's really important, especially for acne, because when you fire blue onto the skin, you're, you're killing that bacteria. But we have to always remember bacteria, whether it's in, in this case in acne or, or any other context, bacteria will always try and multiply. Hence why we get bacterial resistance to, to drugs, right? People don't complete their antibiotic course. The ones that are left grow resistance and then they multiply and the antibiotic doesn't work anymore. You fire that blue radiation onto the skin. They're not going to become resistant to the blue radiation. It's not possible. However, if they're able to multiply quicker or, or multiply back, the patient's not going to be that much better off. So you get, if you're on something like a flex, you're probably going to have to treat them a lot more often every day if possible to actually reduce that bacterial load on the skin quicker than they can multiply back. And then you have a net reduction of the bacteria. If you have a tri-wave MD, you're absolutely pummeling that bacteria to the point where there's very little. You know, if, if you wanted to treat them at a lower frequency with a tri-wave MD, like twice a week, something like that, maybe once a week, depending on how good the home care is, you, you, you still might actually get a really good result in, in really good time. Otherwise, you know, the, the flex on, on once a week um, with less power, it's going to take a lot, lot longer to achieve that result. Um, and that's why it's okay to use it every day. Yeah. Okay, great. And in terms of the Triwave MD on that, then you, your your thoughts on being able to use the Triwave MD with blue light, actually, you, you say that that could be used every day to destroy bacteria. Yeah. Um, and I've done that. I've done that on myself. I've done that on friends. I've done that on patients. The reason being, it's, it's a physical process. Think of radiation in, in, in the form of blue light hitting an individual bacterium like a hammer hitting a nail, right? It's simply a physical process. If you hit that bacteria, it's essentially going to shatter. So the more bacteria hit, the more bacteria that are going to shatter. There's not really a whole lot going on in, in you, i.e. in your skin, because the bacteria are not part of you as a biological organism. They are a separate organism that's just trying to leach off you, basically. So when you, when you treat every day, you're hitting the bacteria and causing a change there. All, all that's going to happen if that radiation hits your skin is you're going to warm up slightly, which is fine. You know, you, same as if you go out in the sun, for instance, it's not really going to do anything. It might make your pigmentation more obvious to see for a couple of hours because of the heat. That's fine. It's not giving you pigmentation. It's just heat and, and blood flow coming to your skin. But you can hit the bacteria and they will just die quicker. Okay, brilliant. And actually, that brings us on to our, our fifth question which is about acne. And we know that Dermalux has a, you know, a medical um, certification for the treatment of acne. Um, and so what results have you received in your clinic for acne with Dermalux? And how do you differentiate? Dif Definitively. What, what do you want to say? Definitively. But no, I'm going to can't get it out of my, I can't, ha, ha, I can't get the word out of my mind. Do you know what I heard the other day from one of my colleagues said that, if you drink Diet Coke, because it's got something called um, aspartame. aspartame in it, and that can cause your brain to glitch. Yeah. You can't get your words out. I did not know that. I always have full fat Coke. But yeah, I know you do, don't you? And, I don't and I'm a dentist as well. so I, <laughs> I don't normally drink it very often, but I did have one. She's like, I oh, didn't have that. Anyway, we, we're moving on. Yeah. So, so yes, what are the results that you've received in, in clinic? And, and why, maybe you've already answered this, but why are you using LED versus other treatments that you could offer at clinic for acne? It's, I've, I've Hands down, I've had the best results with LED. Um, in not just the quality of the clinical result, but as a, as a business as well, it, it's best for the business, um, even economically speaking. So for instance, if let's, as an example, let's say you're looking at uh, peels, right? You, you've got to sit there and you've got to physically do it. Um, if you're doing IPL, you've got to run it all the way across the face. LED, a patient can fall asleep. Nothing's going to happen. You, you know, you can sit next to them, do your notes for the previous patient, do, do whatever you want to do. You're, you're free up and the patient gets a much better result. And 
whenever I sell people, always it's, it's the best way to do it. The inevitably, the question then is, oh, what about a PL? What about this? So, excuse me. So I'll just compare it if possible. So if we start with a PL as one example, a PL is causing damage, right? It's acid, but it's, I admit it's controlled damage, but it's still damage. Acne is an inflammatory condition. You're more likely to react and you've got you know, more sensitive skin. It's probably thinner skin as well. So when you have thinner skin, when you have more uh, reactive skin, why would you want to cause damage even if it's controlled? You're, you're risking the acne potentially getting worse, even if it's light. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, the bacteria can multiply because you're not going to do a peel constantly every single day or every few hours. Um, and when you do, let's say, IPL, are you going to have as much power as the Triwave MD? A lot of people will say, well, IPL will give you more power than LED. That's an invalid statement. Because when you say LED, the difference between the, the, the worst and the best is huge. Um, it's like living in a wooden shack versus Buckingham Palace. Mm -hmm. The Triwave MD has so much power. It's the only one with a medical license. When you realize that you can't say LED and, and include Triwave MD in that because it's, it's so much more powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, with an IPL, you're going all the way across. With LED, you, you just put them there and, and you know they can fall asleep. There's so many different treatments you can compare it to, and it comes out on top of every single one. Um, it takes less effort for you. There's no side effects. There's no injections. There's no drugs. Um, there's no sort of pre-treatment phase or anything like that. They can just start straight away. Um, it doesn't even physically touch them. You know They can literally fall asleep, and they will associate your clinic with top-notch results but with zero difficulty of treatment, zero pain, zero side effects, all those sorts of things. Um, and, and why would you want to do treatments where there are those sorts of risks and those sorts of side effects? Um, and they rely so much on you, like let's take a peel. If you're, if you're 30 seconds out on neutralizing that peel, you know, you're more likely to get a scar or a burn or anything like that. Why, why would you want those kind of risks with the treatment? In, in the entire history of LED, there's never been a recorded complication. There have been misuses, for instance, like with any treatment, but in terms of the actual LED causing anything going wrong, there's been none. I'd dread to think how many scars and burns people have got from things like peels, as an example. Um, there's, there's no need to take those risks anymore. So there's, there's no chance I would use anything other than LED, personally. Yeah. Amazing. And, you know, LED is actually the perfect treatment, a uh, perfect preconditioning treatment to an invasive treatment, isn't it? Yeah. In terms Just, of if you are going down that route and that's the treatment that you're offering, we want to re remove as much inflammation as we possibly can from the skin before we then go into that treatment because we want to prevent scarring and the complications that can happen. So it's the perfect treatment to have free, free uh, an invasive treatment and then, of course, post-treatment. Yeah. I mean, to, to put it this way, the response that our skin is most used to making um, in terms of when you look at all our evolution is, is, is getting darker, you know, post-inflammatory pigmentation, um, sun damage, uh, burns, pigmentation production is, is very, very big as, as a response. Um, and when you understand that and you realize that actually studies have shown if you pre-treat with near infrared from LED and then you go out in the sun without sun cream, you won't sunburn as much. If you think about it, that's, that's massive and that's huge that literally reverses everything we have been trained to do as a result of evolution. Our entire body's response to damage control has not been triggered now because of how strong the skin has been made. Even if you have great skincare, you still have to put sun cream on because you can still get damaged from the sun. We're starting to see evidence where you don't get sun damage or much less sun damage by pre-treating with, with near infrared. I, I don't know of anything in the world that is capable of strengthening our skin so much that we don't even trigger our own defense mechanism. Um, and, and that for me is, is hundred for everyone is, is hundred percent unique. Yeah. And how exciting that you've got that tool to be able to do that. I mean, it, it's just uh, amazing. So um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, and actually on that uh, topic then of, you know, of, of healing the skin, you do share that you think that near infrared is the most powerful tool that you can have, yeah, in, in a clinic. So, so why is that? Why is the near infrared one so important to you? I, th I think it's one of the most powerful things in medicine, not, not just in, in a cosmetic clinic. When you look at uh, pretty much every 
medical problem that we have, chances are somewhere along the line, inflammation is involved. Whether it's cancer, whether it's acne, whether it's pain, uh, whether it's um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, anything you want to think of, arthritis, inflammation is involved somewhere. And inflammation is at the very, very core and heart of the aging process. And I don't mean aging process in terms of being alive for longer and developing wrinkles. I mean, on the level of DNA, because when our DNA multiplies every time and we have errors in that, the new cell will have errors and that, that's why when we get old, we, we don't function as much. When you reverse the inflammation, you are literally reversing the aging process. So that's why it's so powerful. It's not about treating something with inflammation. It's about treating the entire aging process because if you treat that, everything starts to self-correct. It's no coincidence, human beings that live past 100 years old very rarely have any kind of comorbidities. Aging and disease are the same thing. They, they, they are just manifestations of you know, error rates in DNAs and, and mitochondrial dysfunction and, and all this kind of stuff as we get older. So when you can reverse the inflammation using near infrared in a way which you can't do with anything else, by the way, and you probably won't be able to do for at least a very, very long time if anyone's even capable of making technology like that, then you understand how powerful it is. You're not treating acne. You're not treating psoriasis. You're treating the entire human aging process, um, which is really profound um, for me. I mean, I obviously know and know LED inside and out, but even listening to you gets me excited, <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, it's just amazing. So that leads us on then to our next question. God, this is going so great. Um, so we, how do you talk about LED to your clients? How, do, how are you integrating LED into your business at the moment? What things are you saying? How are you making sure that that your the end user, your client, understands the importance of having this treatment? It's a good one. I think um, the main problem, but before I answer that question, the main problem which I have, and it'll be interesting if, if other people have it as well, is, is, is patients don't really know much about LED. They know that there are these masks you can buy on Amazon. That's probably as far as they know and, and that's it so it's it's predominantly educational where when i if, if i mention the word led quite often probably about half the time the patients will sort of go oh yeah, yeah i've seen those masks oh i've just just bought a mask for like 300 quid 400 quid and just face palm and i say to them you know why certain parameters are important um and i say to them why the power level is is really important and that, that's why it's going to cause any change you don't have the power you don't have any change and then slowly they, they start to understand. Um, but the patients who don't know about LED at all, I, I just show them that re, you know, radiation's effects. Mm -hmm. So in, in something that they know, you know, use radiation to, to destroy cancer, chemotherapy, use gamma radiation, use x-rays to see, to see through you, um, use infrared to try and heat things up, et cetera, et cetera. If you sit outside, UV makes you darker. And then they say, okay, yeah, yeah radiation is, is, is really, really powerful. And I said, well, there's certain radiation types that I've just said that are used for certain functions and sometimes in skin to do certain things. There are other radiation types to do other things as well. And they happen literally like that. And you don't have antibiotic resistance. You don't have side effects. You don't have to have organ tests to make sure you can take these drugs and all this kind of stuff. So it's much easier. That kind of starts to make a bit more sense then. And then I say the most powerful one in the world is what we have here, the trial of MD. Generally, you just start to say the words the most powerful in the word, in, in the world. And, and you have the patient's attention already. So once you say that, they're more than happy to try it, especially if you have you know, pictures for before and after. Um, that for me is probably the, the most important thing, before and after pictures. And then when I show them the result, I, I usually say, okay, how long do you think that took? Like if it was an acne case, like oh, maybe six months, a year, something like that. And I'll show them my cases and it might be like four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, and, and they're shot. And immediately they just, they just want to try it straight away. Yeah. Amazing. And, and just to touch point on the FlexMD as well. The FlexMD is the most powerful portable device yeah. in the world and is at least three times more powerful than any other LED device. And I think that the issue is clients, you're right, aren't educated on the power of LED. They've had an LED device from Amazon, they've used the device and then they said LED doesn't work for me. 
yeah. but actually it, it's down to the wavelengths it's down to all of these different things that once we know them as clinic owners and as therapists we can then share that and it's you know it's down to us to then educate the educate our clients on that yeah um, anyone says it doesn't work the, the first thing i say to them is you know what, what was the value what was the power level yeah um what, what were the wavelengths yeah. generally they can't answer straight away and then I say, well, 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 there's your reason. If you know, if you want to drive a car and there's no fuel in the tank, of course, it's, it's not because the car is terrible; it doesn't work. It's because you haven't used it properly. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I show them the pictures after that, and then they understand. Okay, it does work. Yeah. Probably not had it the, the right way or with the right equipment in in some way. Yeah, exactly. Um, thank you so much. So moving on to question eight, um, and so well-being is quite a hot topic in our industry um, right now. And there is an inquiry launched to support physical and mental health uh, and well-being in our industry to then take the pressure off, off the NHS. Why, in your opinion, is is it is light therapy um, a, a really important solution to this? There's starting to be evidence produced. Um, it's not it's not equivocal by any means, I'll be completely honest, but it isn't for for any kind of treatment either but we're starting to see benefits that light therapy has in that regard mm -hmm. um my suspicion and it is just a suspicion I, you know, I don't think anyone can prove this or disprove it but it's like when, I, when we go back to near infrared and when i said you know you're, you're reducing inflammation everything is working better mm -hmm. and mitochondria actually we, there is evidence to suggest that there is some way that they can communicate like a mitochondria on your face might be able to send a signal to one like in your heart or, or something along those lines we don't know exactly how, but there seems to be some evidence to suggest that. And so when you're taking out all the information and you're optimizing the cell function in a way which is 100% efficient mm -hmm. and can't be replicated by any of the treatment, it's no wonder you're starting to see downstream effects such as ones with, that you, you just mentioned with LED. Yeah. And, and I think in terms of... Um you know, light therapy with blue light, um, with studies to show that it can help to balance out the serotonin in the body, to to help with the happy hormone, to help us balance that. Uh, do you have anything to add on, on that side of things? I think that is something which needs a lot more research. I think there's positive findings already, um, but I have to be honest, I don't think anyone in the world can say they know the exact mechanism of it and i don't think we'll know for a long time yeah. but i can say that there there was looking like positive findings from it at the moment yeah. and i think what's important to know is that light is a communicator so you can communicate wherever it's applying into the skin the cells then can communicate and you know there's certain photoreceptors in the back of your eye that will uh, you know communicate to different parts of the body so you get this cascading effect um mm. Uh, from from different from different wavelengths which I think is is quite a, a powerful thing um okay perfect thank you so much for that um and then referring now so this is um question number nine referring to this the latest article in um aesthetic medicine I'm not sure if you saw it um but it was about um that phototherapy is about to set the market alight yeah. Um, and yeah, and what, what, you know, what do you think are the key requirements needed? And we've actually covered quite a lot of this now, but maybe it might be nice to just, um, awesome. uh, yeah, simplify it. So, you know, what are the requirements when looking at a phototherapy device? Um, and what are the consequences if they're not met, if we're not meeting those uh, requirements? So wavelength is, is probably the most important. Wavelength and wavelength accuracy, they go hand in hand. So that's like... Um, you know, if you have the wrong wavelength, it's like having the wrong key going into the lock. Mm -hmm. There's literally no point. You're just wasting your time. You might as well use a teaspoon instead of a key. Nothing's going to happen. And then in terms of the wavelength accuracy, that's basically saying if your machine has 415 written on it, blue light, is it actually producing 415? Or is it almost there? And is it doing 414 or 413 or 412? Or if it's really bad, maybe 410 or 405? how close it is to the intended wavelength is, is the accuracy. The technical term is tolerance, peak tolerance. Now, if you don't have the right wavelength, nothing's gonna happen. If you have the right wavelength, but you still don't have the right accuracy, it's like having the wrong wavelength. 
because you're saying 415, but still 405 is, is coming out. So that's why wavelength and wavelength accuracy go hand in hand. And the tolerance, ideally, you want as close as possible to, to being absolutely perfect. I don't think it's possible to be 100% perfect, um, maybe in another 100 years or so, potentially. But right now, the tri MD is the most accurate, at plus or minus two nanometers. Mm -hmm. And actually, I say the tri MD, it's, it's every Dermalux device because the LEDs are the same across them all. Yeah. So plus or minus two nanometers, it cannot be beaten in the world right now. Um, and I doubt it will be beaten at least for a very long time because the Dermalux have the most accurate LEDs. So how can other people be more accurate? It's, it's, it's a no brainer. It's not really possible. So wavelength as well as accuracy, power. So if you imagine, like I said, the individual particle causing a change in an individual cell, there's, there's millions and billions of cells all over your face, all over your skin. So if you're only producing one particle, what you know, you're not going to make any change, let's be honest. So the number of particles hitting your skin is really important. That translates to power, you know, how much power is, is going through. Um, that doesn't mean as much power as possible, but it also doesn't mean as little power as possible. There's, there's, there's a window. Yeah. You have too little power, nothing will happen. If you have too much power, you, you just destroy cells. Okay. Um, so for instance, if you want to, if you, if you throw a, balloon, a water balloon at someone, if you throw it to gently it's going to plop out in front of you if you absolutely throw it as, as hard as you can it's probably going to go you're probably going to throw it that quickly it will smash it will just burst in your hand whereas in the golden window if you throw it properly it will, it will burst on their face right too little power too much power and the right amount for the intended result radiation is the same if you go way too powerful and just destroy everything what you're describing there is something like gamma radiation you want that in cancer treatment because you just want to destroy all the cells um, if you want to go more powerful than the LED, but not to that extent, you're, you're kind of describing a laser because you're ablating the skin, you're destroying it, but on purpose and, and within a certain uh, sort of framework and, and depth and, and region and things like that as well. So there is a max limit to 240 joules is what we have clinical evidence for right now. Anyone that offers more than that does not have a license or evidence for that. Anyone producing less than that is just doing you a disservice because you can have a better result if you hit that 4240. Um, and they're probably the, if I was to keep it really simple, they're probably the two most important um, parameters, wavelength as well as its accuracy and power. Yeah. Perfect, thank you for summing that up. Uh, and then the very final question then, it's to celebrate our 10 year anniversary. And obviously the demand for over the last couple of years has been insane. For Dermalux uh, and uh, for light therapy, um, it's higher than ever. And so, what do you think the future holds for light therapy in this industry and possibly other industries? I think 100% will go into other industries. Um, why wouldn't it? Um, we know globally there's antibacterial resistance, which which is is never going to go down. It's only ever going to go up because patients just want antibiotics for everything now. Every time they get a scratch or a bit of toothache or anything like that. Um, so it would definitely go to other industries. It has to, because you're going to run out of antibiotics at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so blue light will definitely be used more. Um, and then once we look at the power of red and near infrared, I think that will start to spread as well, especially a lot more in, I think, sports medicine, mm -hmm. um, private industries like that. And then in terms of how LED itself is going to change, mm -hmm. I think people are going to start doing a lot more research if you look at the, the amount of papers that come through now looking at it there's a lot more but also they're of higher quality because people are using better devices now when you have better devices and more people working on something you're going to discover more things as well it's just natural so i think we're going to discover a lot more about led um so if you want to be ahead of the curve you may as well you know get the best possible device you can now mm -hmm. so that you're not playing catch up with, with everyone else and there are certain treatments i have to say which, which are like trends they always come and go. Social media has a lot to do with it. But there are certain treatments which will always stand the test of time because nothing else compares. So as an example, um, really simple one, fillers. There's nothing really that can mimic fillers. You can, you can do fat replacements and things to, to volumize areas, but the concept of volumizing at least, that's going to stand the test of time. Everyone is, is always going to have a, a place for that. And 
LED, I think, is in that same category because, like I said, there's nothing else that can replace it. There's nothing else that can do anything similar. Um, and there's nothing else that is as safe or as risk free or as easy to do as well. So I think 100 percent it's going to be using more industries. We're going to find out more. You know, we might discover more, more wavelengths and more targets as well. Yes, it's so exciting. And when you understand exactly how powerful this is, the yeah. possibilities are endless, aren't they? As long as you understand those three lights or, you know, or the other wavelengths in, you know, in as much detail as you can, you could treat any skin condition, couldn't you? There's, there's, yeah. You could tailor make it to whoever's in front of you, which is just amazing. Yeah, um, and that's really crucial. You can treat anything. Yeah. What I mean is, it doesn't mean it's a cure for anything. It means when you have things like near infrared stopping inflammation, because so many things have inflammation in them, you can help that condition by reducing the inflammation, even if you don't 100% know exactly what it is. Yeah. I have that all the time. People refer like complications from fillers or some skin problem. I'll be honest with the patient and say, look, I don't know the exact diagnosis, but I can see it's red. I can see it's swollen. It's clearly inflamed you're not going to be harmed by reducing the inflammation. And a lot of the time, you just put them under near infrared, a bit of blue if there's any bacteria, and they're actually fine. It, it, just, it just helps them straight away. And they respect you so much for treating them when other people won't, which, which is really good for complications. I think it's almost it's like a clinic builder almost. But I haven't done anything special, I'll be honest. I've, I've just understood how near infrared works. I've, I've given it to them, and, and they get better. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> Right, we definitely need to do some more clinical trials and clinical trials <laughs> together. That's what we need to do. There's um, a lot of questions here as well, I've just realised. Okay. So we've uh, just finished our 10 questions and now we've got uh, 30 other questions. So if yeah. you're here all night, then let's, let's carry on. I'll, let's yeah, work. For it. So I've got here um, Interfacial, and so this is from Maria. Interfacial, when should I use the Dermalux Flex or, or, or actually any Dermalux device? I would say it's the, the very final step before you put your moisturizer on at the end and your SPF on at the end. It's so important that the skin is clean before you, um, uh, you apply the radiation and, and also exfoliated because sometimes dry skin can reflect light off, off the surface. But the way I always look at this is if you had a really sunny day and you've got a really dirty window, you don't get that sunlight in. If you clean the window, you've then got that, that beautiful sunlight come in, you've got that full radiation. So it's so important to make sure the skin is cleansed, exfoliated um, uh, beforehand. And then it's the final step before your moisturizer. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I would say if you want to as a clinic, you, you can offer a different style of package. So you can do whatever facial you're doing and include the LED to prevent risk afterwards. Or you can do it as a full package where you pre-treat with LED with a lot of red and infrared leading up to it. Mm -hmm. So the skin is really strong and they're less likely to inflame, scar, burn, et cetera, from the, the facial or mm -hmm. whatever you're doing. And then afterwards, you improve the healing process with, with the same thing. Um, so you can either just do it as part of the treatment or you can pre-treat leading up and then post-treat afterwards as well. You, you can style it as, as two different types of packages. Yeah, so I totally agree. Um, so Cheryl, I've got, um, I've heard not to treat Fitzpatrick type four and above with blue light as it can make hyperpigmentation uh, worse, I believe that that's meant yeah. to say. Um, would you therefore use LED in acne patients with a higher Fitzpatrick skin type? I've used it right the way up to type six. Yeah. Um, I would say in terms of making it look worse, is it worse or does it look worse? Because they're two different things. Yeah. When the skin is hot, you'll go, you know, if you're pale, you're going to look red. If, if you've got quite dark skin, you, you're just going to look a little bit darker. So that's not necessarily the pigmentation that is getting worse. It, it could just be the heat and, and the way looking they're looking at, at that particular time. Um, if you are worried, just, just avoid the red. Just, just go for near infrared on its own. Um, in terms of blue, you know, if they've got acne, you know, I, I, would, I would say that the benefit of the blue in reducing the acne, at least in the short term and, and then the long term, is more beneficial than the negative of potentially temporarily making the hyperpigmentation look worse or the, or the skin look, sorry, looking darker for, for any reason. Because even if the acne is there, when the acne disappears, you're probably going to be left with pigmentation anyway. Yeah. So why not just get rid of the acne and then treat the pigmentation separately? Yeah, 
perfectly, totally agree. Um, another question from Aisha. Um, oh, we are upgrading our LED devices. We want to go with Dermalax. Wonderful. Uh, but torn between the tabletop or the Triwave MD. So that's our compact or our brand new compact light, which is launching um, very, very soon um, versus the Triwave MD. And I've seen that you've seen that it, it's a, a better price point. But actually, you know, you've asked what, in your opinion, um, makes this different. So I guess what well, hopefully we probably answered that throughout. Um, but the difference is in terms of power, if we just looked at that, you have your Flex MD, uh, which is your portable device. You've then got the compact light or the compact, which is the tabletop version. That is five times more powerful than the Flex MD. And then you've got the Triwave MD, and the Triwave MD is 10 times more powerful than the Flex MD. So it is about power. The difference there that you're looking at is, you know, is half the, is half the power. Um, uh, the MD goes to the MD, 100%. Yeah. Your, okay. your clinic, your, your, the patients you get will get such more intense results and, and so much quicker results. Even, even though it's more expensive, I promise you, the, the reputation you gain more than pays for the price difference, 100%. Yeah, totally agree. If his brand reputation is one of the business goals, yeah. the, the Triwave MD is going to get your client to that, that end result. There's amazing before and after is much quicker. Um, after microneedling, um, this is anonymous, after microneedling, which colour of Dermalax LED should you use? That'll be blue and near infrared. So what when you have when you finish microneedling, ideally you want to just, if, if there's blood, wipe it off. Um, if it was me, I would just use saline. That's all I ever do. Um, wipe it off, make sure it's a little bit dry, then put the uh, a canopy on. If you can do 20 minutes, blue, near infrared, great. If you want to infuse certain things into the skin and you want to do that, that's up to you. But if you're going to, you have to understand that the, the pores, you or not the pores, that the punctures you make in the skin will start to close. Mm -hmm. By 15 minutes, they're completely closed. Mm -hmm. So in that case, the LED is probably only on for about 10 minutes immediately after you've cleaned everything. And then you've got a couple of minutes to, to quickly put whatever products you want to actually infuse into the skin as well. Yeah, brilliant. Um, uh, Lucy has asked, is um, vitiligo a contraindication to LED? It's a great question. Um, it's not something that has a tremendous body of evidence because LED is still, you know, still an outcome of treatment in terms of evidence, um, in terms of number of papers at least. And vitiligo is a very specific thing. And combining them together, there's not that many papers on it. Personally, I would say it's not a contraindication because it's not, it's not going to make the vitiligo any worse. The dark patches may look darker yeah. immediately after treatment, like I said, because of the heat and, then, and there's higher blood flow. But the condition hasn't worsened. It just looks darker on that day because of, of the heat, that's all. So if you want to use it in, in a patient with vitiligo, go right ahead is what I would say. Brilliant. Uh, Maria's asked, um, can we use LED after a peel in a facial? Um, yes, but it's very, very important. You don't use red. A peel is you know, it's going to be acid. It's going to irritate the skin. It's going to damage the skin in a controlled fashion, I admit. And, and you're going to neutralize it so before it, it causes a massive burn. Fine. But the skin is going to inflame to some extent because of the acid. You, you cannot help that. So if you put red on, are you going to increase that inflammation reaction? Now, I had a patient very recently um, who she had quite bad acne. It seems like the clinic may potentially have, have used red by mistake. I don't know. And, and the acne just got so much worse afterwards. It's not because the LED did anything bad. It did what it was meant to do. But red increases cell activity. If you're, if you're applying a cell activating wavelength during a time of inflammation, you are activating inflammation. So if you've just done a procedure, I never use red because any kind of procedure is going to traumatize the skin in some way. Even if it's really minor, like let's say you've done fillers, the trauma is really only where you've entered the skin, maybe a little bit under the, uh, under the skin where you've put your cannula or your needle, fine. But I still wouldn't use red because there's some kind of inflammation. So post-treatment, always avoid red. You can always do blue because you don't want an infection. You can always do near infrared to reduce any inflammation that's there as well. Okay, great. Um, next question. Uh, oh, it says that, um, will this be saved? Oh, can you hear me okay? It just says connection unstable. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, we're all good. We're all oh, good. 
Great. Um, it just says um, if the, the, you might have missed the beginning of this, it's absolutely fine. If you just re-click on your link at the end of the webinar, you should be able to watch it all the way back and you've got 30 days and then we will add it to our YouTube, uh, YouTube channel at the end of that. Um, answered a couple of these now. Comparison between the compact and the tri-wave MD. There's quite a few of those. Um, what are your thoughts on how to? Um, what are your thoughts on how you treat with the Dermalux when doing needling? So we've answered that. Um, can we apply a mask um, before, um, whilst the light is on, whilst the radiation is on? I know your thoughts on this. So I don't know if you want to share that. Can can we? As in as in like um like, like, like one of the sheet masks. Yes, yeah, so they've got a sheet mask on their skin um, at yeah. the same time as radiation. It's not necessarily going to harm you, depending on what, what the sheet mask is infused with. But you know, I wouldn't do it. It's, it's not, if, you, if, you sh if you shine a torch and it illuminates, say, whatever's in front of you, and then you put a piece of A4 paper in front of it, it's, it's very faintly illuminated. The paper's taking most of the illumination. That's what you're doing. To the skin the skin is the wall behind it it's receiving a much less radiation dose and you have to understand any time you're using led the purpose is to get radiation into the skin anything that reduces that what what's the point of doing the treatment in the first place um it's not worth it so i i definitely wouldn't um, and there's no real need you know you you can you can do the led get the benefit from that and you can still apply the sheet mask another time and still get the benefit from that there's, there's no real need to do them at the same time yeah, I, I need to say that. Um, uh, are you good for a couple more questions? Absolutely, absolutely. Wonderful. Uh, it's gone so quickly, I can't believe we're an hour in. Um, how many treatments a week would you give to some to a rosacea patient? Um, rosacea, I would probably go with near infrared at the very least. Um, you, you can do near infrared like every day if you wanted to. Um, obviously people can't attend every day, I get that, that's understandable. But as often as possible. Um, red, it, it, it depends how inflamed they are. If, if there is quite a lot of inflammation straight away because of the, the skin's barrier function is, is greatly reduced, um, I would wait till you do red. I would do near infrared as, as often as possible. Once you see like a 50% reduction in, in, in redness and, and symptom relief, then you can add red in. And at that point, you know, if you wanted to do every other day, a couple of times a week, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Okay, great. And eczema, what about eczema? Is eczema possible to help with LED, Maria's asked? Yeah, well, eczema is, you know, it's inflammatory in nature. Again, um, there is 100% inflammation going on inside the skin. So you can 100% reverse that inflammation with near infrared. Mm -hmm. So again, you can use it as often as you want. Too much inflammation reduction is not a thing. It doesn't exist it's not like you need inflammation to survive. Mm -hmm. So by reducing it as much as possible, what are you doing? You're just letting your cells function the way they want to function. So you can do near infrared as, as often as you want. Red, again, it depends on the level of inflammation. If there's a heck of a lot and, and they're really struggling, I'd probably hold off. Yeah. If it's minor, you should be able to use red and then it should start to recover itself. Yeah. My son has it on the back of his knees. He's only three, and I have the Flex MD at home, perks of the job. And um, he he will get under it for a couple of minutes, like probably five minutes, and the next day it's gone, and there, there's no itching or anything for weeks after. Of course, children heal much quicker and respond um, much quicker. Um, but yeah, it's an absolute must uh, for, for for children as well. You can use it for all ages. Um, someone's asked here, uh, can we apply SPF uh, cream on the face before treatment? So absolutely not, because the SPF will act as a block. It will completely block all of that radiation and will reflect it back from the skin. So um, no SPF. Um, uh, 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 what else have we got here? Um, if a client was coming in for a holistic body treatment and decides to go under the lamp with makeup on, again, makeup is going to is going to block the radiation. Um, there was a question there about uh, how to integrate it and get um, uh, into their business, but hopefully we've been able to answer those questions now um, with what we went mentioned earlier. Um, what is the difference between having an MD certified machine and a non MD certified um, machine? For example, what is the difference between our compact 
and then the the um the triwave MD as a medical um device. Wants to keep the MD certifications. I'm waiting for a compact. I think the compact MD is coming out, isn't it? Yes, it is. The compact light's coming out. Um, any day as we speak now. I think we're probably uh, looking to uh, launch it um, towards the end of the month. So there is um, there's pre-orders being taken right now. Um, so yeah, do get in in contact if there is any questions that you had about the pre-order system. But very very soon. We can't wait to get our hands on it. Um, let's see what else is there. Uh, have I answered my question? Great. Uh, how long to leave the light before um, facial to strengthen the skin and after the treatment straight after? Mm. So if you can do the, the, the LED in the weeks leading up to the facial, let's say for about four weeks leading up, roughly speaking, um, and you do that, let's say twice a week for four weeks, and then you do the facial, and then you you can do an, another protocol twice a week, four weeks immediate in in the weeks following as well. Mm -hmm. The day of, you can follow what we said before: the blue and near infrared. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, what would you say in terms of pregnant clients? Um, can they have LED treatments on their face? Um, it's I don't know legally what I'm allowed to say here, but I'll I'll, I'll tread carefully. When you're when you're giving approval for use in pregnant clients. It's like giving approval for use in, in any other condition because it's, it's tested under that condition. But ethics boards to run clinical trials will rarely give permission for you to test on pregnant people. Mm -hmm. Because if it has, if it leaves an effect on the baby, the baby hasn't consented for it, et cetera, et cetera. I won't, I won't go into it, but you can understand that. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult for anyone in anything to say it's safe to use in pregnancy. But what I will say is this. Friends of mine have been pregnant um, that that trust me implicitly with with, with the treatment, you know. And and I've said, look, in my personal opinion, that's all it is. It's just a personal opinion. It 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 should be absolutely safe yeah. because it, it's mainly having a localized effect. Mm -hmm. And near infrared, when it reduces inflammation, yeah, you know, inflammation is harm. Mm -hmm. So when you when you're taking away inflammation, how can it be harmful when you're taking away the cause of harm, essentially? So I'm, I'm more than happy to give them near infrared. If, if they have a bit of acne, I'm more than happy to give them a bit, a bit of blue as well for antibacterial effect. I've personally never seen anything wrong. And I don't personally think we will see anything wrong with, with use in pregnancy. Um, but legally, it, it, it's very difficult to give a yes or no answer for the aforementioned reasons. Yeah, and, and I think Dermalux haven't done the testing on pregnancy, but we do use it as a, we do suggest it as a precaution, and you probably would need to check with your insurance company whether that's something that you would be covered for um, in clinic. So, so that would be my answer on that. Um, and then the last question then is, can, um, can you use LED for arthritis? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's um, near infrared that you should go for, and you can use it for red as well to try and improve the, the cell function. There's yeah. not as much as many scientific papers for use in arthritis than there are in, let's say, acne, because in things like acne, you can just take a photo and you know whether it's improved. In arthritis, a lot of it is also subjective interpretation from the patient, which means the scale you're using to measure the clearance of arthritis is different on every single patient. So there's no uniformity in how you're measuring your outcome. Um, but there, there is evidence for it, yeah, absolutely, in pain, in, in, in inflammatory conditions like that, for sure. Brilliant. Well, I think that comes to the end of our questions. Uh, some really great questions in there. So thank you so much for everybody getting involved. I really enjoyed it. I just don't know where the time has gone. Probably could squeeze another hour out of you, if I'm honest. <laughs> Uh, but we'll leave that till we'll leave that till next time. I know that me and you are working uh, closely together on um, the Dermalux Academy with some really advanced modules coming your way very soon, which is really exciting. Um, that um, that all of our existing customers will be able to um, attend. So we hope to bring you more on that as and when it comes through. Um, oh, I just saw something pop up then. Oh, oh, some great thank yous. Thank you very much for that. Um, if yeah. anyone has cases that they're unsure about, or they're not sure whether to use this protocol or what protocol to use at all, or, or whether it's safe to treat, um, I, get, I get messages on Instagram all the time from different clinics. So it's just Dr. Abs, you'll, you'll find me on there. If you want any help, I'm more than happy to, to help people with individual patients and, and individual sort of questions and, and cases as well. What a guy, what a guy. 
Thank you so much for that. It's just been a pleasure to um, have you, have your, and I know your time is so valuable. Yeah. So we're so pleased to have you. And um, and yes, so there will be, um, I'm sure we'll be working together in terms of the webinar side of things um, very soon. So please all follow the, our social pages um, to find out when the, the new webinars will be launching and then also the new modules for the Dermalax Academy. Um, and yes, I hope you've all enjoyed it and I hope you've taken some valuable uh, learns away from um, today's session and hopefully some actions that you can put in place. We'd love to hear, um, you know, how you're getting on in, in clinic or in salon. So please do tag us into all of your stories and all of your amazing before and after photos. And um, until next time, um, you know, have a uh, have a great couple of weeks or months until we meet again. Take care. Thank you so much, Dr. Alves. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye bye.